if I missed you this week. Yes. <laughs> I think we've seen each other like, what, five hours? Something until like today. that. <laughs> so, but I have not been in my garden. It's Friday. I haven't been in my garden since Sunday. And a big storm came through Monday. It did. A big storm. We actually got some damage to our, our goat shelter that got blown over. There was sticks, branches down everywhere. Yeah, it was pretty torrential. Not like rain-wise, just hurricane force winds or tropical storm force winds or whatever in Michigan, which, I mean, Midwest is known for our good wind storms and rain storms and all year, of that. Yeah. ice storms. Right. We just haven't had to deal with it this year until late in the summer. And um, they called me out on a job all week. So I need to... <laughs> I always do that. I need to get in my garden, find out just what is worth harvesting versus what needs to go to the pigs. Because I'd imagine a lot of tomatoes are split and all that kind of good stuff. Mm -hmm. So I don't think I'm going to tackle the corn today because it's just not a priority. But I did notice some damage. I've harvested all the corn. I basically keep the stalks for fall decoration. But before it gets any more like collapsed and ruined, I want to go ahead and probably cut it down and then I'll have it hanging for when I need it. Oh, I do have one. So <laughs> I tried um, growing loofah twice before and um, come to realize we just don't have a long enough season in Michigan. So I started my loofah plants inside well, well in advance, transplanted them out in the garden. And I was noticing some flowers up top and I thought, you know what? That just didn't work either. But then I just saw loofahs. I still don't know that I'm gonna have enough time because our first frost could come as easily as the third week of October. Um, so I don't know that I'm gonna have enough time for them to like grow to maturity, but that I've never even had a loofah grow. So that is win number one. So we'll see. So yeah, I don't think I'm gonna pull the corn stalks out today. Maybe that'll be a next week project. It just depends, I'll watch the weather forecast. I, I don't like getting, letting it get blown down because then it crumples the leaves and everything. It doesn't make a pretty decoration. Um, but just an idea of, you could also feed it to your pigs and your goats. They love it too. Um, and we might do that with some of it, but that's not my priority today was just something that I noticed going on in the garden. And, um, oh, it looks like something else is going on in the garden too. So let's go check out what's going on over here. <laughs> so I have got what appears to be blight. You know, I thought I noticed the potential beginnings of it last weekend. I came out and did that last tomato harvest and I noticed one of the plants at the bottom looked oddly dead. And I told myself at that moment, hmm, I wonder if this is blight. I need to keep an eye on this. And it was only affecting one plant. And now it's totally affecting one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, Nine. Oh, yeah, it's really bad across the way. Ten. It's affecting basically all of them. And blight is a um, soil-borne, I think, fungus. And um, But maybe it gets passed by birds and other things like that, too. And it happens in damp conditions where blight can really spread and where there's not good airflow between your plants. And I never pruned these plants from the initial pruning. So if you guys have been here with me before, you've seen that my tomato plants have been quite tight and compacted. And that will just create an environment for fungal growth because there's not good airflow. And I guess this might be what you call late season blight. It can happen early in the season and um, it will eventually affect the fruits. Now, so far I haven't found any fruits affected by it, um, but we have started having that season in the um, early, you know, late summer, early fall season where um, 
you know, it's hot during the day, but then when you wake up in the morning, there's lots of dew and it's cool. So it creates like that low fog situation and that it was obviously just the prime conditions. Now this will immediately spread all through all of my tomato plants. It's one of the main reasons actually why you don't grow tomatoes with potatoes or tomatoes following potatoes, things like that, because they both are blight, um, blight susceptible. And so you don't wanna leave this in your garden because Number one, as soon as you find it, get rid of it. So what I should have done is that day when I found it, I should have just pulled that plant right away. And then you burn it, or you could bag it up, throw it away. We just burn it. Um, but it's near enough to the end of the tomato season, and I have so many tomatoes already, there's just still so many green ones, that what's going on in my mind, just to be honest with you, is it worth it? And the only reason it's worth it right now is because I don't want to add to the blight fungus in my soil. I want to get this out of here. So I probably will figure out what I'm going to do. And it might be something like where I come and I just prune away all the affected leaves and branches and then leave the main plant and see how that treatment works. But it, right now it's just a lot, a lot. So there was a video recently where somebody was asking the question about our sunflowers. It's like, why? No, why? What are you doing to them sunflowers? A lot of them are broken from the wind. And when they get like that, we basically give them to our goats for food. We did try one year to save them. We cut all the heads off. We hung them in the garage. We thought we were doing the right thing, which it is the right thing to save them and use them. But we don't really eat them too often. And when we tried to do that, the mice just came in and like ate all the seeds. So. I'd rather give the seeds to my goats than my mice. So I'll collect up some of these while we're out here. And then as we head back up towards the house, we'll uh, drop these off at the goats. I just want to thank whoever told me um, when I was planting all my tomato seedlings that mountain vineyards are grape tomatoes because I honestly thought I was planting like some variety of a paste tomato and I would have had so many grape tomatoes in my garden had a viewer not told me what they were and um, that's what I love about my channel is I never act to like well I don't like that I never act like I don't know I readily act like I don't know a lot of things and we build a community of learning and growing together here so it's a lot of fun um, and I'm always learning from you guys, just like you're learning for new things that I share too. So I still have this whole other row of tomatoes to harvest though. So we're gonna head back there after I get all these cherries out, our grape tomatoes and head over there and see what we've got. Todd's um, best friend's mom came over and shared some of her harvest. So thank, thank you, Sandy. But she came out to the garden just to see the garden and everything that we have going on. I don't know that she's ever seen it before, honestly. And she was, I think it's just perception for you guys that see the garden and can't get scale on it. And her reaction was, wow, your garden is so much smaller than what it looks like on YouTube. And I try to convey that a lot, like in my gardening um, videos, how you can grow so much food in a small space. And even though I give my dimensions, sometimes it's hard to um, understand what that looks like without seeing it. And so our garden's 40 by 40, somewhere around there, square feet. And it's quite small, but I do cram a lot of growing food in a very small space. And when Todd shared that with me, I was like, finally, somebody can testify to what I'm, what I'm trying to share with everyone, that it is quite a small garden and um, we do get quite a lot of food out of it by doing high intensity gardening. And honestly, with this blight issue, would I have had this problem? Um, I've never had this problem any other year. Um, 
And the only reason I had this problem this year, honestly, is that I didn't have time to properly manage my garden. So if you use good management practices, you can avoid this and still do high intensity gardening. I just didn't have the time to get out here and prune properly, keep it aerated and uh, manage um, inviting situations to happen in my garden. Get back there soon. These in here, I need this basket for the peppers. You can pick the cayennes. These Since red your, ones? Your hands are tougher than mine. <laughs> oh. Without gloves? <laughs> I've picked them every time without gloves. I haven't had a problem yet. It's the cutting process, right? Yeah. So, I've had a lot of people comment lately. Rachel, you look really, really tired. Is everything okay? And, um, no, there's stuff going on in my life and everything's not okay. Um, but I don't ever, I'm never fake. So he knows, like, I can't, everyone that knows me knows I can't hide how I feel. Like, my emotions are on my <laughs> sleeve. I wear them. And um, so I've been saying it just generally, like, it's just a lot going on. Work, life, everything. And, but I'm not here to necessarily always be chipper and entertain. And all of that and I don't want to ever give people that are looking into how can I do what you're doing work full-time have a family have other things going on in life and achieve it all and sometimes it's hard it really is hard it's you want to be here you want to be doing the things that are like the happy things and sometimes there's a lot of other things pulling you away from what you want to do and achieve. And I guess I'm just trying to bring that realness to our channel. Like, I don't want to show you just all the pretty Instagram and all the happy smiles and the <laughs> joy. And I know that that brings viewership, right? That brings, um, like, people want to feel good when they watch stuff, right? right? And I, I recognize that. Um, but also know that we're real people too, and we're real life, and this isn't fake, it's not phony, it's, it's our home and what's going on. And so I'm just sorry if like my, I, I guess I'm not sorry. I'm sorry if you're here to only see happy, I should say that, <laughs> because that's not what this is. This is um, our life, and we're openly sharing it on YouTube. And um, well, we're not always. <clears throat> there is happy here. Oh, no, no, yeah, yeah, yeah. No. <laughs> I'm not, I want no. people to think if this is your first time watching one of our videos that they're all going to be oh, doom and gloom. Oh, no, no, no. Just, yeah, go watch all the last three years. <laughs> we're just referencing some of the comments that we've seen yeah, recently yeah, yeah, about, yeah, yeah, like, yeah. wow, you look really tired. Are you okay? And, right. And the, the truth of the matter is, is I am really tired and I'm not all okay. And that's okay. And um, yeah, it's just a season. So thanks so for your observation and awareness. I appreciate it. Um, and we're going to get through this season in life and there'll be a better season around the corner. Yeah. And so, um, yeah. So I'm still learning about this. Um, oh gosh, it's all fuzzy out here. I'm still learning about this red Malabar spinach. A lot of people, I often call it just Malabar spinach and people always ask me what kind. It is red Malabar spinach. Bought from, I believe I bought the seeds from Johnny Seed. I just recently restocked after knowing that I love it, love it, love it um, from M.I. Gardener. So I know M.I. Gardener has the seed. Um, and it is a vine. If you're new to my channel, I should have grown this on a trellis and I just didn't take the time to do that. Um, but I'm learning about it and all the ways you can eat it. So this entire plant is edible. The vines, the berries that are growing on it, the little flowering bits, 
but I have done massive harvest off this already and there is so much spinach to be harvested. So it's a little warm today. I'm gonna wait till the morning, come out on a cool morning and harvest this. Now my daughter-in-law was over the other day. She was making BLTs for dinner and she wanted some greens, like fresh greens. I didn't have any lettuce for her. I said, go out to the garden. There is um, Swiss chard leaves, spinach leaves, beet green leaves, um, oh, and the sweet potato vine leaves. I'm like, grab all of those things. Take And when she brought them back in the house, they were limp. You know, I'm like, of course they're going to be limp. It's the middle of the summer and the uh, heat of the day. So take them home, wash them, throw them between a couple damp paper towels, put them in your crisper. By dinner, they'll be nice and crisped up. So I figure while I'm sharing tips with you guys, or with her, I should share that tip with you guys as well. And um, there, there's just so much. She um, said when she came in, like, your spinach is beautiful. I've never seen spinach like that before. And um, while it's not prepper spinach, it is an excellent, excellent spinach replacement. I do get viewer questions. Let me, I'm just gonna chew one real second so I can give a 100% honest answer. So I did see, which I didn't recognize it. I just chewed that leaf. I saw a lot of questions that, is it slimy? They had, and I don't know that I would call it slimy. It is a juicier leaf. That's what I would call it. It's, um, it has a bite, a real chew to the leaf compared to like a leaf lettuce or a leaf spinach, like a, you know, a proper spinach. Um, so it's hard to compare. I mean, it definitely has like a rubbery texture. Um, but the thing is, is it is the beginning of September. Today it was like 87, 88 degrees and it's sweet. It's not bitter. It's not nasty. Um, it's sweet. So I'm going to come out here and do a, another big, big harvest of this and hopefully get some more rounds canned. Um, but yeah, so you can eat your beet green leaves, your sweet potato leaves, your spinach leaves, anything. Don't feel like you only have to grow lettuce, right? There's lots of things that are edible in the garden for those BLT nights. I love the cowpea plants. <laughs> oh. Just mm. the stakes are still there? Yeah. Oh, I thought it was over in this spot for some reason. Mm -hmm. Green mantises will do that sometimes where they'll fly like six or eight feet off the ground and just like stay in one spot staring at the ground until they see something and then they'll swoop down hmm. and grab it with their little tail and things. Hmm. So it was just out there just hovering. Pick a what? A pick a pick, a pick a pack of pickled peppers. Is it pick? Pick. Uh, Is it not? Pack. Pack. A pack. Pick pickled. a pack of pickled pick no, peppers. No, pack of pick <laughs> pickled peppers. I think that's what it is. I think, isn't there one of the units of measurement called a peck? A peck. So yeah, you so pack. So you're going to pick no. a peck. You oh. pack a pack of pickled peppers. You know how I pack? pack packing pack. peppers. Yeah, pack peppers. Oh. Is it kind of like my color moth <laughs> that I made up when I was a little kid? And I always thought that moth was actually called moth. A moth? What? The color mauve. Mauve was moth? I always called it moth. Oh gosh. Because I heard somebody when I was a kid say that the color mauve was pronounced moth. 
Oh my goodness. Probably one of my Italian grandmothers. Yeah. 